It's our Christian Music Spotlight Show. We are here from Bellevue, Washington at a Tully's location. Seattle, of course, no less. We are here right now with uh, Above the Noise artist to Centricity, Centricity Records, Jamie Jamgoshen. Jamie, Hello. nice to see you. Thank you. Thanks for taking the time out, uh, yeah. out of your time here in the Northwest mm -hmm. to join us. Love being back in Seattle for a weekend and glad this worked out. Now, of course, for those who may not know, well, a lot of our audience is from the Northwest here. Uh, you were from Seattle for a number of years there. Kind of tell us about your experiences here in the Northwest in the Seattle area. Yeah, I actually grew up in Boston, Massachusetts. And when I came to know the Lord at 21, God led me to um, a church in Kirkland, Washington called the City Church. And I worked and interned there and was part of their worship ministry for several years. And uh, after about six or seven years, I ended up moving to Nashville, which I've now made home. And uh, But I love the Pacific Northwest, so I call it home. <laughs> and, of course, you were doing a conference. You do many conferences. You did one in Astoria just this past weekend yeah. for a pastor's conference. Uh, um, what's probably your favorite thing about leading worship as far as these conferences, these things you do? What's kind of your favorite part about that whole aspect of it? Um, I really love um, what happens in the presence of God. I, I love worship. I think when I was a new believer, um, I didn't realize that there were churches that had, you know, like full band lights and people lifting their hands. I, I didn't grow up with any of that. So I was so taken by more than the music, but just the presence of God in those moments. And I think it's in those moments that our hearts change the most. And it's in those moments that God really does a, a work in us. So it's just a joy and an honor to be able to help facilitate um, a corporate moment where, whether it's young girls or women or men or, you know, mixed demographic, where we can all just worship God. That really is my passion to help lead people into his throne. And that's what it's all about. And speaking of young girls, you do a uh, different set of conferences on the side, of course, called Modest is Hottest, yeah, which you, you started homework. a number <laughs> of years ago. Kind of tell our viewers about uh, what your involvement is in there and kind of how that all got started. Yeah, Modest is Hottest. Um, it's a really fun conference for teen girls, and we've just started inviting their moms, which has been oh, great. Wow. Now, sometimes the moms have to go, you know, to their own breakout sessions because they have their own issues of, you know, raising <laughs> teen girls, and teen girls are like, I don't want to be with my mom all the time. But um, it's really my passion to see girls know who they are in Christ the media and magazines and just the society, this world wants to say we have to act, dress, look, be a certain image. And the more I fall in love with Jesus and the more I allow him to show me who I really am, um, I see that some girls are really just stuck in that and don't know how truly beautiful they are past outward beauty kind of stuff. So it's a day of really empowering the younger generation to know who they are um, to be confident in who they are, and to um, be the world changers God has called us to be. Amen to that. It's great work that you do on that end. Uh, and, of course, one of your latest uh, albums talks about uh, uh, being above the noise. And uh, kind of tell us how that particular album kind of relates to worship and, and really what it truly means to kind of stay above the noise and yeah. focus on what's important there. Well, what's neat is we're now working on no new music. So I'm like, oh, my hey. goodness, above the noise. That's so from, be from <laughs> behind, you know. But I um, have some new singles out. But for Above the Noise, I remember in that season, um, it was really busy. It was my second album release. And I was touring a lot and doing a lot of interviews, stuff like this. And I kind of missed those times that I used to have just hours with God. And um, I was able to be at you know, every church service and just soaking in his presence. And I was in this whole new season. And I just felt like God kept reminding me, you're in a new season and this is life right now, but you can still lift me up above the chaos, above busyness, above, you know, everything we get bombarded with, you know, Facebook, Twitter, you know, emails. <laughs> and just to take those moments, sometimes it's when I'm in the car, sometimes it's when I'm on a flight, and to really just center my heart and lift him up and make sure that my connection with him is still just as strong above the noise, above the clutter, if that makes sense. 
in this day and age of technology and communication, I think that uh, that message is now more no, prevalent. We're than all ever, married to our iPhones and Blackberries and and whatever it is, we iPads yep. and yep. Wh whatever other gadgets we're carrying along yep. with us at any point in time. Now, of course, you're in Nashville, making your home there, uh, doing a lot of your music stuff out of yeah. there, and do a lot of touring and stuff like that. Uh, it, wh what's your kind of trick to finding that balance between, uh, you know, personal time with the Lord and touring, and how do you manage to find a balance in all these different aspects that that you go through? Such a good question. <laughs> I don't think I found it, <laughs> but I think the Lord has really helped me with my schedule. Um, because, you know, conferences, usually women's events are in the spring, and then we'll do some fall touring. So I know usually, and just the way it's been the last several years, I usually know January is a slower month, and then things start picking up. So I'm just really trying to find balance, like you said, and making sure that um, not only am I spiritually feeding myself, but emotionally and physically, that's just as important, you know, for me, like getting with some girlfriends and having coffee, you know, feeds another aspect of my life or working out or playing tennis, just those things that I know I need to do to kind of stay sane. Uh, stay, yeah. <laughs> Of course, we're here at Tully's in Bellevue, which now leads us, since we have a person who's been in the Northwest for a number of years, a special edition of our Fun Fast Facts. It's the Pacific Northwest edition of Fun oh Fast boy. Facts. Favorite Northwest hangout? Now remember, I haven't lived here for like six, That's seven right. years. Okay, Northwest That's hangout. Right. Oh Let boy. you remember um, anyway. That I remember. Well, I'm a girl, and I love to shop, and I think one of the nicest malls is the Bell Square Mall. And I love it. And they've got such fun restaurants. I just went to this noodle place, Boom Noodle, last night. That was amazing. Oh. So I really like <laughs> Bell Square. That's awesome. Uh, since we're drinking coffee right now, do you have a favorite coffee drink? Well, I'm a new convert to, like, rice milk, soy milk, almond milk. So any of that. And I love coconut. So if you put chocolate and coconut in there, it's like an almond joy bar. Oh, I'll have to try that. That sounds good, actually. <laughs> Favorite song or album that we'd find on your iPod, CD player, whatever Crinkly. it is that you might be yeah. listening to at the moment? Right now, I cannot get enough of the um, Bethel Live. Oh, it's at a Reading, at Bill, Pastor Bill Johnson's church. Um, their latest release, there's a song called Come to Me by Jen Johnson that I think is just beautiful in the heart of God and really just encouraging. Um, and they just put out a more acoustic vibe CD called The Loft Sessions. Oh. And um, I can be one of those kind of high-strung, busy, busy types. And so it just brings a lot of peace to me to put that in. So uh, The Loft Sessions and the Come To Me song are my two faves right now. <laughs> Last question, our fun fast facts. Uh, do you have a favorite uh, Bible scripture or scriptures that you kind of tend to hang on to and that kind of motivate you on a, on a yeah. daily basis? Yeah, I used to always quote Jeremiah 29, 11, and it's still one of my favorites, um, that he's got great plans for us um, to give us a hope and a future. As of lately, though, for 2012, I just, whether it be like in somebody's bathroom on the wall or somebody writes out a scripture for me in an event, I cannot get away from the scripture. And forgive me, I, I'm not going to mark the address right, so you have to Google it, um, that says, now to him who is able to do above and beyond all we could ever ask or imagine. And God's just trying to, I think, really show me and maybe just to encourage anyone who might be watching this to believe that he can do the exceedingly abundantly above and beyond all we ask or even desire. And um, I always say I have these big, big dreams. And one moment I felt like God say, well, I'm an even bigger God than your big dreams. So just to believe God for um, those things he's placed in our lives that he will do exceedingly abundantly above and beyond all we could ask or imagine kind of a new hope and not putting God in a box that yeah. he can do whatever it is he says exactly. he's going to do. And exactly. It's Jamie Jam Goshen here on our Christian Music Spotlight Show. Thanks for joining us. Now, of course, you lead these different conferences and these different uh, events. Uh, to you, what does it mean? We've heard many artists on this show talk about worship is not a genre, it's a lifestyle. Mm -hmm. And what does worship really mean to you in that aspect? When you're leading people into the presence of God, mm -hmm. what, what is your message to them at that moment? I love that. And I can remember learning that um, on a tour um, years ago with Point of Grace. It was called the Girls of Grace Tour. And I loved it. And, you know, every night thousands of young people lifting their hands and jumping for Jesus and the lights. And one night I can remember God just kind of pulled my heart aside and was like, you know, this outward stuff isn't authentic, like true worship, like sure that we worship with our mouth, we worship with songs, 
but like getting to the heart and getting to the lifestyle of worship. And I ended up actually writing a song that really is my journey with this and my testimony with kind of learning um, how to live a life that honors God and glorifies Him in everything. And it's called Hear My Worship. It's off of my Reason to Live CD. But God just really spoke to me out of um, the New Testament where it says that He's searching for those worshipers who would worship Him in spirit and in truth. And it, it kind of rocked me because it says nothing about songs. It says nothing about set lists or any of that. It's talking about our heart, that we would connect with him in a really true way um, and honor him in spirit and in truth. So um, I'm trying probably just as much as everyone else is to, to really in like the smallest decisions to the biggest way, but to live a life that really honors God and to be aware of him in everything and um you know, as cliche as it sounds, but to let that light shine and to allow God to like, I love the phrase kisses from heaven, like allow God to just wherever we're at to reveal his goodness and his presence in our life and be like, oh, wow. Okay. That was the love of God. That was the love of the father. So I'm learning. <laughs> That's awesome. I think we all are. I think we yeah. all have a, a ways to go, a work in progress until yep. we're, we're called to be up there. And uh, so uh, ab above the music, above, you know, I anything that you do, what's kind of the main takeaway when you're telling people about Christ, when you're speaking to people who have either who have backslidden, who may have never gone down that walk mm -hmm. before, what's your main message to those people who might be watching right now? Uh, yeah. that are looking for that hope, who are looking for, mm -hmm. for uh, that relationship. Um, well, that brings me back to when I was 21 and first came to know the Lord. Um, didn't grow up in a Christian family. So when I was in college, just made a lot of wrong choices and um, went down a lot of wrong roads. And I can remember how broken and how desperate I was just for encouragement and for hope. And for someone to really say, um, there's more for you. And I guess I would just want to encourage anyone that might feel like they're in that place. Maybe even they're a Christian, Joe, that has been like walking with God for the longest time, but maybe they feel stuck where they're at. And I would just encourage you that God has more. And as we just go back to the simple truths of his love for us and his plans for us and just kind of let go of every place that we're at and just surrender those things to him, I think it's in those moments that we see him work the most. And um, I would just encourage you to hang on and to, if you can, to just dive into the Psalms in the Bible. Those Psalms, they're songs that King David wrote years ago. They are so relatable to anything a young person or old person today would walk through. And um, allow God just to start to breathe his life over you. But I, I guess I would just really say to hang on and, and not to lose hope. And um, to know that God loves you no matter what you've done or where you're at right now. You can have a fresh start right in this moment and, um, and, and move forward in all he has. Now kind of tell us what you're up to nowadays and for people who want to connect with you and your music, uh, where they can find you and connect with you for that. Well, I'm kind of new to the Twitter thing, but I'm, I'm getting used to it and I love it. So if you can spell my long name, Jamie Jamgosian, <laughs> good luck. <laughs> you can find me on Twitter and then Facebook there. I have a music page and I love that and write and talk to a lot of people there. But just doing a lot of um, conferences this spring and um, I'm pretty sure it's not the contracts aren't solidified, but I think I'm going to Guam and Manila and Tokyo Whoa. in May to do some worship and some of my teen girl events that I'm real excited about. I've asked the Lord to really expand my borders and territory. I never thought I'd get an invite from Guam, Guam, but God is big and I'm excited to go there. And um, so, yeah, just doing teen girl events, worship leading. And we just finished a new single that I got to do with Ed Cash. And that was a dream come true. He's Good like... Time. Yeah, he's like produced my favorites, like Chris Tomlin and Carrie Job and Matt Redman, and I was I was like a you know total like oh, I'm in the room with Ed Cash. Oh my gosh, I was freaking out. But that new song will be out this spring. It's called Everything You Are, and it's just a real heartfelt um, worship song that he produced that will be out this spring. Working with different producers like that, does he bring kind of a whole new kind of creative aspect to it? Working with all these different artists, yeah. did he bring kind of his whole different take to it he did it, it was written with a friend of mine at church and it was just I'm a piano girl and it's just this real heartfelt piano song and um, he just turned it into this awesome corporate big worship sound that our church had already been singing it one way but I love what he did with it <laughs>
Well, definitely thank you for taking the time out uh, here, spending time in the Northwest for yeah. a few days in your downtime, uh, spending yeah. with us here in our program. And mm -hmm. we as a ministry continue to pray for your thank continued you. success and continued uh, uh, expansion of your reach as far as not only your regular worship events, but for your girls' conferences that you mm -hmm. do and that you uh, continue to be a role model for these for these young women and that you continue to lead many of Christ wherever you are planted. So thank you. Nice to finally meet you guys. Nice to finally <laughs> meet you as well. I know we talked. Uh, did a phone interview several uh yeah. several years ago so we'll be back with more rehoboth ministries television we're going to give you a video package on our modestest hottest conferences we're going to show you that when we come back right now here is your rehoboth ministries concert calendar where you get to find out who's coming to your area soon take a look we'll be right back you the melody the word you the chorus at Berkeley College of Music is when I came to know the Lord and it was through a radical uh, classmate who just shared her shared what happened to her in the, the gospel with me for the first time in such a real way I had never heard that we could be forgiven that Jesus Christ came to die for us I mean that was so foreign to me We title the album Above the Noise. That phrase comes from a song called For You. It's a simple prayer worship song basically saying, God, above anything else, I'm going to live for you. I'm going to sing for you. I think it's so easy to get caught up with our daily lives. And truly the, the cry, I guess, of my heart and of this record is to lift God up above all that noise in our life, the joys, the, the low times of life, to make sure that Jesus is the person that we're lifting up above anything else. As a worship leader and a worship artist, Really, I find my life, I don't want it just to be about songs or performing, but truly about trying to lead people into worship. And I don't know about you, but I think sometimes we equate worship with Sunday morning, lifting our hands, clapping, singing. And the scripture that challenges me is the one that says, He's looking for those worshipers who will worship Him in spirit and in truth. get the opportunity to travel with a great group, Point of Grace. Well, you know, Jamie is great on the road. She's an awesome person to travel with. They really want to talk about issues that young women face on a day-to-day -day basis. Obviously, she's a great worship leader, and that's kind of what she's known for. And when she first came and did worship for Girls of Grace, to say she brought it to another level would be an understatement. I mean, she took it up like 10 notches. I want to stay true to seeing young people know who they are in Christ. Just the, the real ministry, I think, that takes place in a live setting. That's what I'm trying to stay focused on. I think it's her greatest heart's desire just to see those young girls with their hearts turned toward God. Hi, I'm Susie Schellenberger, editor of Brio Magazine with Focus on the Family. Jamie has led worship for our Brio mother-daughter cruise. She's really gifted at leading her audience right into the throne room of God. She's a master at ministry in action. I'm real excited about um, these Modest is Hottest teen girl seminars. We do a lot of worship and then we do a concert. We have fun, fun things. We do fashion shows of what is something cute and trendy but modest. And it's really a time for teens to get together and be real. 
You know, at first I was all nervous, like, God, why would you want me to come and speak to teenage girls or lead in worship? I, you know, you know my past, you know all my mistakes. But I think it's in our weakness that God uses us the best. I love being able to look a young girl in the face uh, or hold her or hug her and say, I've been there and I know that there's forgiveness for you and that there's a new start and that this will not always be an issue in your life. Although I've made some mistakes, God's best is, is the road I want to see them take. Each year that goes by, I think um, our trust in Christ grows and our trust in the plans that He has for us being truly the right plans and the best. I think we grow in that. For more Ringhold with Ministries, we invite you to tune in to our normal hour-long editions, Sunday nights at 9 p.m. and Tuesday mornings at 9 a.m., only on TCTV Channel 22. Join Pastor Christy Horowitz and Associate Pastors Gary Kale and Jim Presley as they deliver fun, exciting, and biblical sermons that will apply to your everyday life. That's Ringhold with Ministries, normal hour-long editions, Sunday nights at 9 p.m. and Tuesday mornings at 9 a.m. on TCTV. Thank you so much for taking a minute to check out this ministry I have called Modest is Hottest. If we look around today, it's easy to see that modesty has truly been lost in our generation. That word, modest, is even foreign in our everyday language. So what is Modest is Hottest all about? It's a movement. I'm excited to say I'm beginning to see a generation of young people being raised up that are saying, you know what, I don't want to conform anymore. I don't have to dress like, talk like, walk like, act like what I see on TV, the magazines, media. They're saying, I want to take a stand and live a Christ-filled life and be the world changer God has created me to be. I think back to my teenage years, they can be hard. All of a sudden you got critters growing on your face and your body's changing. I have such a passion to see young girls walk out their lives the way God intended. So I started these events to hopefully help empower young people to know that it's okay to dress fun and cute and trendy, but we can still do it in a way that's modest and reflects the values that God has given each one of us. You know, what I hope to convey is that Modest is Hottest really is a ministry. I'm so burdened when I meet young girls who don't really know where their values, their worth, their acceptance comes from. So what happens? They look to all these outward things that our society says will make you complete, will make you cool, will make you accepted to find their worth. But at the heart of it, it's seeing young girls' lives change. It's a half day with many components that make up a modest and modest event. We start off with high energy praise and worship. I share my testimony and talk about real issues most teenage girls face. Purity, purity, purity. Yes, we have the purity talk. My Fab Five Modest is Hottest Fashion Tip. One of my favorite talks is speaking on who God says we are. So it's time. Let's take this event, Modest is Hottest, into every city and see young people, 20 somethings, moms, encouraged and changed at a Modest is Hottest event. For more Ringhold with Ministries, we invite you to tune in to our normal hour-long editions, Sunday nights at 9 p.m. and Tuesday mornings at 9 a.m., only on TCTV Channel 22. Join Pastor Christy Horowitz and Associate Pastors Gary Kale and Jim Presley as they deliver fun, exciting, and biblical sermons that will apply to your everyday life. 
That's Rehoboth Ministries, normal hour-long editions, Sunday nights at 9 p.m. and Tuesday mornings at 9 a.m. on TCTV. And that's about the time we have for this edition of Christian Music Spotlight. Thanks for watching. Make sure you join us each and every Sunday night at 8.30 p.m. and Tuesday morning at 8.30 a.m. for more stories and testimonies from your favorite artists right here in the Christian Music Spotlight. Also visit us online at blip.tv slash Rehoboth Ministries. For more information about today's guest, Jamie Jam Goshen, or her music, please visit her online at her website at jamiejam.com. I'd like to thank her for her uh, guest appearance on today's program. We're going to leave you now with her rendition of Hear My Worship, an absolutely wonderful song for those that never heard it. Stay tuned next for an all new edition of Rehoboth Ministries where God made move for all right here on this very station coming up on the other side of the music video. Thanks for joining us. I'm Joseph Neal. See you back here next time. Bye bye, everybody. I got the opportunity to, to write a song that really I just felt that scripture that Pastor Steve instilled into my life which talks about the Father heart of God looking for those worshipers who would truly worship Him in spirit and truth. And I want to invite you to sing this with me. It's called Hear My Worship. And I pray that we're just in sincerity and with transparency would be able to lift this song um, up to the Lord here tonight. We love you so much, Jesus. Yeah.